the definition of ecology is the branch of biology that deals with the relations of organisms to one another and to their physical surroundings. So if you take organisms to be paintings, to be art, then the ecology of art is the relation of those organisms, those paintings, that art, to one another and to their physical surroundings. So art happens in an environment where it's in relation to other paintings. Painting happens in relation to other paintings and it also happens in relation to its physical surroundings. The first image is of a Constable sketch. It was made at Flatford in 1814 and it was made less than 50 metres from where the talk, where the seminar was going to be. And the, uh, the painting is now in Christchurch Mansion in Ipswich. In 2006, starting around 2006, I, I started to make a long series of improvisations around Constable, quite a lot of them to do with this little um, oil sketch. Here's the, um, the oil sketch paired up with um, one of my later improvisations. I think this was about the last one that I did. So one painting was instructing another painting. There's elements within the painting, the, the roofscape, the tree, the little bit of reflection in the pool, which I could take and formally play with, but also play with people's expectations. If I call a painting Willie Lott's House, your expectation is that it refers somehow to Willie Lott's house through Constable. But the two paintings are the same size and I'm very pleased that my painting is now in the collection of Ipswich and uh, Colchester Ipswich Museums. The next image is of um, a house near where I live. It's out on the marsh, edge of the marshes. Compositionally, it's got the same elements as in the Willie Lott's uh, painting. So you've got the house to the left of the image and a lot of space to the right. Um, and this was probably t um, or ten, 10 or more years ago. I made about six of these paintings. The painting is much bigger. It's about 150 centimetres across, 160 centimetres. Um, but it's based on what I've taken from the Willie Lott's house sketch and um, put it, uh, used it in, in relation to the landscape that was much more local to me. So I'm just going to show you a few images of the landscape that, where, that I use. So this is, um, this is over at Landermere. Um, Eduardo Paolozzi and Nigel Henderson worked here in the 70s and Nigel Henderson's son Stephen still lives and uh, works there. This is at Beaumont Quay. This is out on Walton Hall Marshes. And that one is, I've no idea where that one is, it's on the Salting somewhere. Um, but you can see from the landscape, it's quite a pared down landscape, but it's also quite a Dutch landscape. Constable was drawing from Dutch painting. And um, I think the, the idea of a, a rim of landscape around the North Sea that's got similarities is one of the things that I'm quite interested in. So... If you go to the towns of Ipswich and the town of Norwich, there's a lot of Dutch influence in the architecture of the town. But you go out into the landscape and you can feel that uh, low, low country um, influence. So these are a couple of my favourite Dutch paintings. The one on the left is by Jacob van Roysdale and it's in the National Gallery in London. It's called, what is it called? Um, it's got some a ruined castle and church, and it was painted in 1670. And I've made a lot of drawings from that. If I go in the National Gallery, which is one of my favourite galleries, I think that is the painting that I always go and have a look at. The one on the right is by de Kooning, and it's called Untitled 25. Um, it was at Christie's in, I think, 2015, 2016. It was for sale, and a friend of mine told me to go and see it and I went into the sale house in at Christie's in London and it was hanging in a room of amazing paintings but honestly that was it sort of it uh, wiped the floor with the, the, all the other paintings that were there. Right next image is of um, some drawings these are the kind of drawings I do when I'm out in the landscape I spend quite a lot of time each week walking and drawing in the landscape I don't spend a lot of time sitting down and doing elaborate drawings. Each one of these is only a few minutes. And so as, as you walk, the landscape sort of glides and slips past you. 
and every now and then something just clicks, so I stop and make a drawing. Quite often it, it ends up that there's a certain spot or certain points on the on this walk which um, which I go to because I know there's something there that I want. So it becomes um, they become stations on this longer walk. But these are the kind of drawings I do. These are all A4 and in graphite, pastel, oil pastel, that kind of stuff. These drawings are the kind of drawings I'm making from other paintings. So the top left one is from the Roysdale. Um, that was made in the National Gallery. The top right is from Constable's um, Salisbury Cathedral when it was at Ipswich, um, at the Christchurch Mansion, Ipswich. And the bottom two are um, studio variations on the Roysdale painting in charcoal and watercolour. So there's those two elements. There's drawing in the landscape. There's also drawing from other artists' work. So I'll just run through a sequence of... Um, the location and the drawings and the painting for, for, from a recent painting. So this location is at a place called Foundry Dock. And this is a, like a scummy little corner uh, where all the tide brings in all the debris. And um, yeah, it's, it, I like it. So that's the, that's the landscape I'm using. These are some of the drawings. The one on the left is a recent drawing. I've been working from this spot for probably five, six years. But that's a recent drawing as the tide's coming in. You can see there's lines down the right hand side um, indicating the sea wall. You can see the little dock on the left hand side. The bigger drawing was made in the studio and is charcoal, acrylic, um, sort of uh, collage. Just trying to find out how I can use the elements in the drawings I make outside and how I can use those elements in the painting. The, the final painting is a diptych, it's on two large canvases, but the divide down the middle I think really came up from using um, bound sketchbooks. So when you open up a bound sketchbook, you have a gutter down the middle of the book. And I like that artificial line which runs down the middle of the image if you're working across the two pages. And it's, um, it keeps the surface of the paper very much in mind because there's a there's an artificial vertical line running down the middle of the image and it's also like you've got an internal edge painting and drawing you've got to relate what you do to the edge of the sheet edge of the canvas but with this line down the middle there's also an internal edge which you've got to relate to this image is of the final painting it's a one meter sixty tall by two meters across and i think i think it's the finished thing um, it's been on the go for a long time and I thought about two years ago it was finished but I think this is the finished um, finished painting. It seems to have, we seem to have come to some understanding between myself and the painting. So the next image is um, another site that I've been using recently. It has, there's creeks which come in through the saltings and what I'm interested in is those turns and twists of the creeks and how you can either see the creeks as the positive shape and the marshes as the negative, or the opposite way round. So there's these two interlocking shapes, and they can either be either of them can be seen as positive or negative. These are some of the drawings I've been doing, looking at the saltings, looking across. There's an island at the top of the page, um, and it's just looking at the shapes, like I say, of the, of the creeks and the pools of water out on the saltings. The next image is of a studio drawing from those drawings, beginning to try and think how those shapes lock together and how one settles on an image which would fuel a painting. Again, there's a, there's a set of watercolours there looking at the same thing. So you've got these positive and negative kind of shapes. The one on the left, the white is white paper. So the shapes of the creeks are made by painting in all the blue. Um, again, the, uh, the the middle and the right hand one, the, the creeks are just white paper. So it's the interaction between certain shapes and the shapes that they leave behind. And there are, there's a few paintings here which are some of the recent things I've been working on. This is out on the Saltingers again, looking across to the island. There's a set of uh, little bridges and paths which sort of hop across various parts of the Saltings. And it, um, it reminds me a little bit of those, the willow pattern on willow pattern China and um, how you get this little miniature landscape. 
So this has got like a path, a bridge, another bridge going away into the distance to this island. And there's a the shape in the middle of the island. There's a bunkhouse out there, which is now deserted. And there's, so there's a little house which stands in for that tea house in the willow pattern. That's, that's about a metre square, I think. This one is of the seawall and the high tide. There's a walk that I do that runs along Walton Channel and you get a real sense of the coming and going of the tide because the, the channel is directly fed by the sea. So it doesn't have to seep through the saltings. It's, it's a big channel that comes in direct from the sea. And um, this is a sort of sections of seawall and little bits of marsh grass that are left as the tide comes in. Looking back to those drawings a few slides back, um, looking out across Saltings, there's the island in the distance and the little bunkhouse. That's about, that's on paper, that's about 60 by 72 centimetres. This is an, another one that refers back to those watercolours. This is a, a metre by one metre 20, it's on acrylic on canvas. And one from last year, again, looking across the saltings to the island with that little bunkhouse in the distance. I think the landscape, you learn from other artists, and you, you find source material, you find information that you're interested in in the landscape. But what it's all going to is trying to make a painting. So they don't mean anything other than the fact that they're paintings. I don't think all the meaning it's not that there's an external meaning that they're talking about. The meaning is in the actual painting. It is the painting. This is a little one called Towards Manning Tree, and it's of some uh, a channel winding out across the mud. Again, that's got the uh, the sort of um, that gutter line down the middle, so it almost reads like an open book. And then just a couple of images to finish. This one is of the studio last winter with uh, three paintings on the go. And you can see each one, I spend a while on each painting and then take some ideas from that, move it on to the next one, maybe do some more drawings. The whole process is very much to and fro between the landscape, the studio, thinking about other artists, seeing what the painting in the studio demands and then trying to find that in the landscape or making some discovery in the landscape and bringing it back to the studio. So the, there's very much a to and fro uh, interaction between the landscape and the studio. The last slide is of a show at Messam's Wiltshire in 2018. Um, a set of paintings called the Beaumont paintings. And these are a sequence of 14 paintings looking at a walk along the seawall from Beaumont to Landemere. And each painting has a band across the top, which could stand in for the sky, and a triangle in the bottom right hand corner which stands in for that sort of sense of the landscape just moving away from you. So there was a very simple kind of premise and each of the paintings sort of improvised with that, um, with that simple premise. So that's it. Thank you.